Now, here is a picture. Now, I don't want you to say anything. I just want you to think with me, okay? Like I said, don't shout it out. Just answer up here. The question I want to give you is, is this symmetrical? Yes. Have a think about it. Have a think. Yes. Is it symmetrical? How about, um, how about this shape? Is that shape? Let me get the lights for you. That might make it a bit easier. Is this shape? Is this shape symmetrical? No. If you like rotate, what? It could be. What about this one? No. Not symmetrical. You don't think so? No. Yes. No. Yes. No. What about this one? Yes. No. No. It's not even a shape. Okay. So so let's. Well, I mean, it's a pattern. It's an image. Okay. So let's think about these, right? Now, when you look at all these images together, and in fact, this time now, leave space for a heading, I'll tell you what it is in a second. This time, I do actually want you to draw um, one of these with me. Let's do the letter M. Ns are easy, okay? And after all, we are 7N. Um, if you, if you draw an N for me, draw an N for me. When we ask this question of, is it symmetrical or not, okay? The way you know, do you remember I tried with the rectangle? Is you want to draw a line through it, which we call the axis, so that if you reflect across there, you should get the same thing on both sides. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Now let me just, so we can all see. Let me see what happens. Where would you like me to put a line? What kind of line would you like me to draw? And where should it go through? Yeah, straight really. down. Okay, so I could draw a vertical line like this. Maybe you want to draw this with me. Okay. Now you might remember when we did our kind of little exercises and experiments on reflection, right? If I were to fold a piece of paper over and try and reflect across this shape, I kind of run into a problem, okay? So for instance, I'm going to rub off this side. So that leaves only one half of it. When I do my reflection across, what happens? It makes like a weird M. Yeah, that's exactly right. This, this shape has reflectional symmetry. But that's not the N I started with, is it, right? So the N is not reflectionally symmetrical. Neither is the S. You can't find a line that you could draw through this. Doesn't matter which kind of way you go, or the recycling logo, or this weirdo looking spiral. But I think we all agree, because a lot of you said, yeah, wait. <laughs> you know, there's something about this. There's something about this that is Symmetrical. Now, I think Fatima said it. What, what did you say when you it's went to the yes? It's um, <laughs> before the spiral, you said something about this shape. Do you remember? Something about another way I could transform this shape. I could turn, I could rotate it instead of flipping or reflecting it. Okay? And do you notice, if you have a look at this, if I grabbed it, took this side here, and put it at the top, right? It's still with the same shape, right? And in fact, not only could I do it once, I could do it a second time and I'd still get the same shape, okay? So what you find is that I can reflect to get symmetry, but I can also rotate to get symmetry. And that's the heading of today. Rotational symmetry. Okay? I said that you could rotate it the S as well. Yes, very good. In fact, all of the shapes that I showed you, all the shapes I showed you, instead of reflecting across a line, Redraw your N again. Can you do that for me? If you redraw your N, you don't want a line. You don't want a line. In fact, what you want is a point. Okay? Now, because this N here, right, the N that I drew by accident, this is reflectional symmetry, but it's across a line. So that's why you might remember Ms. Lordy called it line symmetry. So this is reflectional or line symmetry. Okay. Whereas this guy here, it's not about a line at all. No lines required. It's just the point. Okay. So we call this rotational symmetry because you have to spin it around. Or, because it's about a point, we also call it point symmetry. Now, all of these are different kinds of symmetry, and they're all important. Okay? Symmetry, in fact, um, you might remember when I talked about geometry. What does, um, what does metry mean? What's that about? Meter. 
It has to do with me. It's got the same root word as meter. It has to do with measurement, right? Do you remember like the metric system? All that kind of thing? That's passive. Does anyone know? Does anyone know what happens, what it means when you have this sim, this S-Y-M prefix on the front of a word? There are words you know. So, well, we have symmetrical. Can anyone think of any other ones? There's a musical word that starts with sim. Symphony. You've got a symphony where you've got a whole bunch of people and they play... Simpsons. That's just the name. You've got... Symphony, you might want to write this up the top. You might also have simultaneous. Right? What these things are is an agreement. That's what sim means, agreement. So a symphony is agreement in sound, right? Phony as in like telephone, okay? Uh, an agreement in sound. This is an agreement in time when things are happening simultaneously. And this is an agreement in measurements, right? It's not the same, but it's got the same idea. The principle underneath is very, very similar, okay? Now, last thing before I show you something really cool, I'm so excited to show you this, right? Do you remember, like we looked at this, the square, if you have reflectional symmetry, then it has, the more reflectional symmetrical it is, the more axes of symmetry it has. Now I want you to turn your heads back to the, um, the objects you made last week, right? Now have a look at some of them. Oh, I still have one. You'll notice the vast majority of them have one axis of symmetry, right? One axis. But in fact, if you look at the one right next to Abby, that blue one, it's second from the bottom next to Maria's glasses. Can you see it? The blue one? Yep, thank you, Abby. That one, do you notice, it's got more than one axis of symmetry. How many has it got? It's got at least two, maybe four, right? So, okay, turn to the front again. Turn to the front. The more axes of symmetry something has, the more reflectional symmetry it has. But here, the more times you can rotate a shape around. Remember I showed you the, um, remember I showed you these guys, right? How many times can you turn this around to get the same shape? One, two. Well, I think it's two. Here's the starting point. Here's the starting point. If I turn it upside down, 180 degrees, it's the same shape. But just like facing a different direction. And I'm going to, yeah, exactly, facing a different direction. When I turn it back around, I turned it twice, and I get two versions of it. Yeah. Each of the rotations was worth 180 degrees. Does that mean it's only one turn? So what I mean is, in the space of one whole turn, how many times do I see the same copy? Now have a look at this shape. In the, in the space of one whole turn, 360 degrees, how many times do I see the same shape? Three. Three, Three times, right? Here's the first one. They're all and I'll turn it, the second one. I'll turn it one last time, the third one. So instead of axes of symmetry, which is what we talk about with this, we call these orders of symmetry. We give it a different name because it's a similar kind of idea. How much symmetry does it have? But it's different. It's about spinning. It's about rotating, not about reflecting.